Hello, ActiSage here on the Sage channel, and we have a fantastic update today that we've been looking forward to for, well, ever since Space Engineers first came out, and especially since we saw Survival Mode. They have finally added Exploration Mode, which means your worlds can be truly infinite now. And, of course, to show this, we first go to New World, Custom World, and I'm going to select Lone Survival, and then instead of going into Advanced Settings, it's right here, actually. So you Asteroid Amount, you click that pull down for Asteroid Amount, and you can see our standard 4, 7, 16, after which, of course, there's nothing else in your world. But then we have these infinite, where it'll keep making asteroids as you go along. So you got low density, and I actually have some footage for, so you can see that it's fairly spread out. You know, there's a few asteroids here and there. They're actually still decent size, but they're pretty well spread out. Then from there, we go on to normal density. So a little bit of a pickup, you know, slightly more hefty, pretty interesting. And then we go to high density where it, it really does look like there's quite a few asteroids there and as you fly out to the world for all of these infinite types more asteroids do load in anyway so let's go ahead let's select high and by the way you can indeed go to the advanced tab which is where we are now and all the worlds are automatically set to unlimited now so big performance issues it says i'm pretty sure that's just an outdated tooltip you can ignore that they're no longer big old performance issues like you used to get but if you do decide to choose a distance, I recorded a little bit of footage earlier, you can see that you will actually hit a far wall where if you pass that point, it'll delete your ship. Also, this was the only, only time I could get a transport ship to spawn in. I messed around with them actually set to infinite and set to unlimited like we have right here, and I never could get one to spawn even though I have cargo ships on. Now, with a unlimited world and these asteroids turned on, what you end up with, and let's actually go ahead and turn on Spectator as well, is also a bunch of other stuff spawning from the Steam Workshop. Such as, remember how the devs were wanting us all to submit files to them? Well, that's what we'll be seeing. You'll see little stations and stuff spawn in there. I poked around for quite some time. I couldn't find one, but the devs have said they will be far and few between. So let's go ahead and actually exit that out. I have a world already set here. So this is High Density Limited. So when I recorded the bit where I went too far out from and my ship got deleted but then we have normal high density so i'm going to load this up really quickly and there we go load it up and you see i've actually got one mod on on this world it's just the my large industrial thruster so i can use this little skipper and you can see here we are in a completely live world and if i do a f well actually let me just go ahead and show you i have some footage for this the asteroids in these worlds now are actually procedural as well and i say as well because every time you make a world just like in minecraft a seed number is generated now which sort of basically you know lays out it's sort of like a calculation if it takes that same number and plugs it in you'll always get the same exact asteroid spawning in the same place in the same way i suspect they'll be tweaking how it reads these numbers in the future to give you a few different asteroids because some of the asteroids you get right now are a bit funky looking Overall, they're pretty cool, but every now and again, you get ones that are just like, okay, it's just two donuts hanging out. That's a bit odd, but it is pretty interesting, and I suspect in the future we'll have biomes as well, because the way the world currently works is, I'm going to hop in my little ship and buzz around while I talk about this, is that as you fly about in the world, the farther away you get, the more asteroids it generates and loads in. So as I fly out into the world, and you see it's a huge world. It's up to 6 AU. So basically six times the difference distance from the Earth to the Sun. So it's huge. You pretty much could go forever, and you're never going to hit the borders of the world. But as you go out into this vast expanse of space, the field of view, or field of view, the distance at which the asteroids load in it's basically at that point generates them using the seed code. So, boop, it generates a new asteroid. And then as you go far enough away, it loads out the older asteroids behind you. But of course, if you fly back, they'll still be there exactly in the same way you left them. Because it, as it unloads them, if it regenerates them, it's going to generate them in the same exact way. Now, mind you, if you've made any changes, then the asteroid will be saved separately, so it won't exactly be unloaded in the same way. When you fly back, it'll be loading in that same exact one, but with the changes you've made to it, so basically saving it as its own different thing. Now, 
Also, the asteroids are, of course, made in a different way, because as I said, they're procedural. So we're going to go towards this donut dead ahead here. Now, this donut-shaped asteroid, you can see it's got a little bit of details on it. Sometimes you'll see some that are really, really janky. As you get closer, it basically is doing on-the-fly tessellation. It's, that's the closest I can get, at least, to where it's loading in more and more detail of the asteroid. So from the far distance we were just at, it was just a very, very simplistic donut but as we get closer to it it's going to basically ramp up its LOD and in the past where they had predetermined asteroids since it's now procedural and all generated on the run it's easier for them to do this it's actually pretty dang cool so you can see some more detail flickering in as we get closer the shadows are going to come live in a second oh you see some more asteroids just popped in because they became they got into our field of view or our our view distance that's it so they load it in for the first time, and of course they'll be the same if we fly away and they unload and come back, they'll load in the exact same way. It's pretty damn cool. And as you can see, we're getting closer to this asteroid. A lot more details going to pop up. I'm actually going to turn on my inertial dampers to slow us down here in a second. Right, yeah, you see a lot of pop in there with detail, and inertial dampener's on, so it slowed us up a fair bit. And you can see that the asteroid, like usual, has a lot of detail. I actually went ahead and did some buzzing about earlier, with an asteroid or so just to show that as you get close to it they also have details like very finite details will pop in but also texture so as you can see as I get closer there's sort of this texture that fades in and then back out a higher detail of texture it's pretty cool and then actually on this asteroid that we just flew over to as you can see as I fly up to it you can see it's loading in a lot more bumps onto the surface even in the right there you can see more loaded in but as I back away that sort of fades the lighting up on that fades out and then as I back out farther you can see these big chunks of the asteroid basically loading into just a simpler planes and simpler bigger voxels it's pretty cool stuff uh, even if the asteroid itself was a bit strange and it's really just two donuts stuck together pretty cool stuff now something else we can do here and we're actually going to go ahead and restart this world in survival so we're going into the world settings we're going to get, switch it over to survival and we're going to jump in to that same world and what I've done here is while I was in creative mode, I took my spectator camera and flew way out here into the middle of nowhere. So you can see out here there's no asteroids out here because as you fly your spectator camera around, it doesn't generate more asteroids. That has to actually be a player that's flying out there to generate more asteroids. So you can see here all these asteroids pop in as I get closer. Now, the reason I restarted this in survival mode is Look at that, you can't even see that station we were just at, but what you can do is backspace and kill yourself. And that small station I was at actually has a spawning platform. So you could theoretically have this is a really, really slightly sick way from getting to point A to point B. And even if in creative mode, if you say, hey, I want to have a base way, way out there and I don't want to spend the half an hour getting way out there in survival mode, you could fly out there in spectator, which is a lot faster, I believe, and then just respawn at that new place and it put me outside the building for some reason and you can see asteroids are now spawning in around us even though previously there were no asteroids here so you can see it's a pretty cool way to bounce about and it's interesting to see how that works and of course if I was to go in the spectator mode now you can see we have a full array of little asteroids and stuff stuck around it's pretty cool and then of course I, if I fly back towards the original spawn point here I think yeah, you can see there's sort of a dead area here, and even now, the original spawn point... Actually, this is just an antenna I stuck out here. Oh dear. Well, now we're lost, because I don't know where the original spawn platform was. But if we were to fly around, we could theoretically find its asteroids. I believe they'll still load in just for our spectator camera, but for all intents and purposes, I don't think they're loaded in really at all when there's nobody near them. Yeah, I can't find them. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. Lots of, lots of potential. I uh, didn't know I had left one of these out here. An antenna relay. Bit weird that I just forgot that existed. Anyway, that's it for this update. It's pretty damn cool. Gonna be um, enjoying the crap out of this. <laughs> it's, it's awesome that this game has come so far. And it's they're, they're putting in a lot of features. The Marek Rosa, the CEO of Keen Software House, did a bit of a blog post. I'll have an annotation or a link down below in the description. You can go ahead and read up on that. It tells some more technical stuff on how this works. And also he basically mentions scenarios that 
their devs might be working on or having tighter clusters of asteroids for certain things. I suspect in the future we might see those becoming biomes, sort of like in Minecraft, where you'll have different sections of space with different things built together, and they sort of mentioned factions at one point having AI-controlled ships. So we might be seeing some of that in the near future or distant future, but it looks like we'll be seeing a lot of very cool stuff no matter what they end up doing, and I'm really looking forward to it. And of course, it looks like they'll be eventually taking more ships from the Steam Workshop, of course, if people want them, and putting them out here. Of course, like I said, they should be out here. We should be able to find them near some asteroids, but they're few and far between. And it should also be noted that these infinite worlds only work on 64-bit systems. If you have a 32-bit system, you're still going to be limited. There's some more technical stuff, but check out Merrick's vlog. And anyway, guys, I think that's the most of it. I'm sure I forgot one or two little details, but I'm sure you guys will discover on your own while exploring. I hope you guys enjoyed this update. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd like to thank you all very much for watching, and I shall see you guys next time. Bye.